Hello and welcome to an updated version of my guide on how to overclock and undervolt your AMD GPU with AMD Adrenaline. The software has been updated many times and the menu layout has changed quite a bit. I also wanted to incorporate many questions from the comment section into a more complete and overall better rounded guide. Before we start with the overclocking section, I want to talk about two very useful features of AMD Adrenaline. First, there is Radeon Chill, a very useful tool to keep your GPU from constantly hitting 100% performance and thus reducing power draw, temperature and noise. You can set this globally under Gaming and Global Graphics. And here you can set minimum and maximum frames per second. But even better, if you are running a game and tap into the software, like in this example with The Division 2, the software will memorize the setting for each game individually. Now this is of course not overclocking, quite the contrary, but I found this very useful for noise reduction during long gaming sessions. The other feature I want to show you are the built-in metrics for AMD Adrenaline. I find them to be sufficient, so there is no need for another third-party tool. You can find them under Performance and Metrics. The overlay can be adjusted in a lot of things like size and which metrics you want to track. Also you can set a hotkey under Home and Settings. And here you have a whole section just for hotkeys. The overlay might not look as fancy as some other tools, but it does the job and I like to use just one software for everything rather than install a bunch of third-party programs. So let's dive into overclocking and undervolting itself. And here I would like to address a few things that occurred frequently in the comment section of my old guide. Starting with the term Silicon Lottery. Every GPU performs different when you try to overclock them. Even two GPUs of the same model will behave differently. So there are no general settings that you can apply to your GPU. You have to fiddle out the boundaries of your model individually. And I will talk you through this. Second, trading performance uplift for stability. As soon as you start overclocking your GPU, you try to find the perfect middle ground between performance uplift and stability. And again, every card will have their own threshold of overclocking headroom. Or not, if you are unlucky. What you can usually expect is a performance uplift of 2-3% to with no stability issues for most cards. If you are lucky, you will gain around 5% before running into stability issues. And only if you won the silicon lottery and you are very very lucky, you can expect a 6-8% to performance boost without crashes. Now can you physically damage your card? Most likely not. What can happen is a game crashing or a hard crash of your whole PC, but that can't usually damage your components, it's just super annoying. And third, when testing what works for your card and what not, you need to test it methodically means you take one setting and one setting only at a time and push it while running a game until you encounter no more gains or run into stability issues. And in an optimal case you try this with several games and extended play times for these games. Only after you completed this for one setting you move to the next and so forth. Otherwise you would change a bunch of variables at once and never know for sure which one is causing issues and which works. Remember, overclocking and undervolting means you trade guaranteed factory stability for a possible performance uplift. Now let's talk business and move to the overclocking features themselves. You can find these under Performance and Tuning. And your screen should look something like this. On the top right you find the symbols for saving and loading your settings. As soon as you start adjusting some sliders, remember to save these settings under a name and at a place where you will later find them, because AMD Adrenaline will reset your GPU settings to default every time a crash occurs. So make sure to keep your settings sorted and saved. 
So let's hit the custom button under manual settings. First up, we have GPU frequency. Enable the category and also enable advanced settings. This will simply show you total numbers instead of percentages. GPU frequency is pretty straightforward. Raise it and stick to the methodical testing described before until you see no more frequency gains or encounter crashes. Every GPU will be able to hit different values here. That's the silicon lottery. Now towards undervolting. As you can see, my voltage is set to 1200 millivolt. Undervolting is not directly a performance boost. Simplified explained, it reduces the voltage that is granted to your GPU to perform the demanded clock frequencies. If the voltage is too low, the card will not have enough power to operate and will cause a game crash and reset to default settings. Now, why do we care about undervolting at all? Because usually there's quite a bit of factory headroom in this setting to operate safely. Lowering the frequency will also lower the temperature of your GPU, thus reducing fan speed and noise. So the idea is to grant your card a little less voltage to perform the same, but cooler and less noisy. I would recommend decreasing the voltage in 25 millivolt steps until stability issues occur. I would rather play it safe here and leave some headroom for the card to operate safely. Next up is VRAM tuning. Enable it and also the advanced settings. We will ignore memory timing in this video. Now with VRAM frequency you need to know one thing. Even before stability issues occur, a higher memory speed at some point will not increase but decrease your performance. Because at some point the higher speed will cause mistakes and your performance will stagnate. And finally, stability issues like green flickering during games will occur. So you could increase the frequency by 50 to 100 MHz and then monitor your in-game frames per second performance. As soon as you see no more performance gains, stop increasing it or dial it down slightly for some headroom and better stability. Moving on to fan speed. Well, this is pretty straightforward. Again, enable it and the advanced controls. I really can't recommend a specific setting here to use for yourself because it depends on things like ambient temperature, cooling capacity of your GPU model and so on. You can set this to your personal preferences. Be careful though, let your fans reach maximum performance once the card runs really hot to prevent it from overheating. I personally would let my fan speed go all in as soon as the temperatures are hitting 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. Remember, the radion chill function from earlier can be very helpful here. And lastly, we have power tuning. This is different from undervolting and simply defines how much total power your GPU is allowed to draw. If you have an insufficient power supply unit, you can reduce the power intake to a certain point to operate your system with a low power power supply unit. You can increase the maximum power draw as long as the power supply can provide enough total system power. This will allow your card to draw more overall power and can slightly increase performance. But it also will increase temperature, noise levels and power draw. So it's up to you if you want these trade-offs in this category. Now I hope you found this guide helpful and leave your questions in the comments. I will answer them best I can. Also, if you find this video valuable and you want to support the channel, maybe think about donating a buck or so. You can find a link for that down below and in the channel description. I would like to expand this channel with your support. Good luck with your overclocking sessions and take good care of yourself.